It's been more than a year since Apple launched the 14 and 16 M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros. Here is what it's like after more than a year of daily use. What's up everybody? Welcome to Apple Insider. Honestly, I'm still surprised that it's been this long, really, right? I mean, this is the 16-inch MacBook Pro with Apple M1 Max processor. Apple launched both the 14 and the 16-inch versions with an M1 Pro or an M1 Max chip on the inside. Um, more than a year ago, it was in October of 2021, and I've been using this thing basically every day since then. And here is kind of my general thoughts, a long-term one-year review of Apple's flagship high-end notebook. Starting off, this is still a beast of a machine. I know a lot of people are waiting for an M2 Pro, an M2 Max MacBook Pro, and they were rumored for the tail end of this year, likely coming out early next year. But honestly, I have not felt any constraints on power with the M1 Max. It has been an incredible chipset. Apps are just flying open. Uh, editing video has been amazing. Editing photos has been amazing. Really, the only thing I am ever held up by is my janky storage solution right now for the times where I have to try to edit video off of in a hard drive RAID configuration that just is brutally slow compared to editing straight off of an SSD. But the machine itself, the chip has been amazing in every way. This is easily the most powerful chip that I have tried in a MacBook Pro. And honestly, I still feel like I get better performance from this easily than my Mac Pro Tower. And this comes in the just portable form factor. Speaking of which, the form factor here for the MacBook Pros, this was a redesign for Apple, and I very much like the redesign. I like the flat look, the flat top, the flat you know profile side view. It's been very nice, super easy to travel with, easily slips into my bags. I like this design. It feels like the one, um, you know, more akin to what I had going through college versus the rounded tapered one that had started to look a little dated, though, I mean, you can't fault them. It still looked like a pretty good laptop compared to a lot of the PCs out there, but this just feels more modern and aligned with Apple's current design aesthetics. Everything has been nice, including the port selection. I actually don't use SD cards. I use um, CF Express cards, but that allows me to use just these little jumpers. So this one here, uh, if I can pull it out, is the oops, the Transcend Jet Drive Lite. It's a one terabyte expansion card, and I just slot it right here into that SD card slot that I never use, and I've got an extra terabyte of storage. It's not the fastest storage in the world, but it's really easy to add it to the Mac because you can't swap out the SSD on the inside. Other ports also solid. I mean, we have the return of MagSafe, which has been amazing. And I use, usually use this with my Thunderbolt 4 uh, dock on my desk, which powers up that way. And I keep my MagSafe cable in my bag for when I travel really easy to power it up. Just everything about it has been solid. The one thing, this is just me complaining here, guys. Um, one thing that I don't like still after all this time is the removal of the touch bar. Opening things like files inside of Affinity, I used to be able to get a preview of recently opened files right there in the touch bar, and it was just a tap to open those right up. You don't have that anymore. You have to go through menus to pull up recent photos or files that I was editing. Similarly, when you're filling out a document and you had like that autofill form, it would pull up things like your name and different options for names and email addresses, and you would tap, tap, tap really quickly to enter information. And there are different ways that macOS tries to do this on the software side, visually on the screen, but for me, it's been haphazard and hasn't worked great. I mean, I'm going through trying to uh, you know click and autofill an address doesn't fill in all the way. Sometimes it doesn't pop up depending on the metadata on the form, but the touch bar always seemed to work great for adding that information. And also for choosing things like emoji is a lot faster than pulling up, you know, the, the globe key, the localization key to pull up emoji popovers and things like that. Overall, I really liked having the touch bar though. I understand that I was in the minority and many of you do not agree with me. Another big change with this MacBook Pro was the redesigned display and the inclusion of that notch. Now, some people at the beginning really hated that notch. Not me, I don't mind it at all. That's extra screen real estate that I get because it's able to move the menu bar up there on either side of it. It has not bothered me, I love it. The camera is still okay. 
Apple did upgrade it to a 1080p camera, but it just meh. Honestly, if I'm using a camera, there's gonna be something like the Nikon that I'm shooting on now, or I'm gonna switch to continuity camera. I'm gonna use like one of the Belkin iPhone MagSafe mounts. I'm gonna take one of these, I'm gonna put this on top of my laptop, and use this instead. They also have the version for desktops if you're using a monitor, but this is gonna work better and I'm gonna use my iPhone's camera system and get even better video. But I still like, at least you have like the portrait mode and center stage, other effects built in to the native camera on this thing. It's a good upgrade, a needed upgrade, but continuity, continuity camera inside of macOS Ventura has been so nice to use. I'd rather use that more often than not. So I push my Mac pretty hard. I am notorious for leaving massive sets of tabs open. I open a lot of windows at the same time, usually with like video editing software running in the background. And somehow this thing always manages to keep up. It does fantastic running through everything. I mean, look at this is my computer right now. You can see all the open Windows along the top, those are like all Safari tabs or windows with multiple tabs inside of them, let alone everything going on on the screen. It's a lot. There's a lot of things happening and this thing keeps up. I have been very fond of Apple's current M2 MacBook Air. I think it's an amazing machine for pretty much everybody out there, but if you need more power, the M1 Max uh, and even the M1 Pro to a degree are amazing chips. These redesigned Macs, I've had no issues with. Sometimes with a redesigned product, you end up running into small issues that Apple has to fix in a Gen 2 version. And I haven't had that here. Everything has been spot on. The keyboard's great, trackpad's great. This display is great, port selection is great. I love these things. In an updated version, I'm looking for an updated version of Wi-Fi. I'm looking for possibly more storage options and of course Apple's new chipsets with those M2 Pros and M2 Max chips. But otherwise, I think these things are gonna be very, very similar to what they are now. And as long as you don't need any additional headroom, I think these are still worth buying more than a year later, even with new ones on the horizon. But let me know what you guys think. What do you think of the M1 Pro and M1 Max 14 16 MacBook Pros, even though they have been out for more than a year? Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you'd like to grab one, we've been rounding up sales discounts for all of these things. They're currently being discounted quite a bit between the holidays and new models on the horizon. So there's some links in the description. Otherwise, stay tuned. I have so many more videos to share with you.